siding of your house, you can generally go up a little bit past with the resin anyways, because you're gonna be hiding all that with flashing. And it's better just to make sure everything's covered than leave a dry spot. Okay, where we're at now is that we've done the, uh, the fiberglass seal coat. The surface is a little bit tacky. That's normal for an unwaxed resin. What we're gonna do next is the main uh, waterproofing layer. We're gonna put down the fiberglass fabric and then we're gonna soak that through with resin. So what we've done earlier on, I'm just gonna grab this mat. What we've done is we've laid this mat out and figured out how it fits. Obviously fairly simple deck here, but you'd take the same process with a larger, more complicated shape. You'd roll out your mat, from the bulk roll, cut it to shape, feather the edges if you need to, um, then roll it back up, mark it with tape, so that when you come to this stage, all you have to do is roll it out and you know exactly where it's going, exactly how it's fitting, then you're ready to do your next step. Now how you want it to fit is you want to have a little bit of the feathered edge out over any of the edges of the flashing. Reason for that being is really you want to have as much fabric going on the flat sur surface of the deck, as much of a tie-in basically from the fabric to the flashing. And by having just this little bit of fuzz sticking out the side, you can relatively easily just sand that off by hand, maybe trim it off with a bit of, of a, with a razor knife as it's starting to cure, or well, more close to finishing curing, but not totally cured yet. You can quite easily trim that off roughly with a razor knife, let it fully cure, sand it off, and it just blends in very nicely. So I'm just gonna roll this out, and you can see it goes up the wall a fair bit. Quite a bit more, in fact, than I put my resin coat up, but I'm just gonna leave it as is. And one of the nice things about a resin coat is it, it does kind of help stick it all into place. It's not that you can't move it, because you can, and on a windy day, you may need to weight it down to make sure it doesn't move when you don't want it to, but it does help kind of keep everything in place. So I've got this down, it's where I want it. I've got my feathered edge, good on both sides. So now I'm gonna mix the resin and start wetting out the surface. Now I've got my supplies here. I'm gonna start, of course, by mixing out my resin. Um, it is pre-mixed, or pre-measured, I should say, for how I want this part of the layup to cure, which is not too fast, because I'm gonna be doing a fair bit afterwards. So like I said, I'm not really gonna use a paint tray. I'm just gonna pour out some resin here. And for right now, I'm gonna use just a little roller to get started here and go up the edge. Now you can see that it is starting to wet out here. What the resin does is well part of it is that it wets out the fabric and it just turns clear because it is glass fibers after all and glass is quite often clear just not when it's in little strands like this but the other thing that the glass or the resin does sorry is there's a binder in this fabric that holds all these individual strands together and what happens is the solvents in with the resin dissolve that binder and kind of allow just basically then their individual fibers on their own. And sometimes when there's a little bit more binder in the fabric than in other spots, it's a little tougher to wet out, get all the air out of it and make it clear. But that's your goal, is to take the white fabric 
and make it so it's clear. Now because I'm putting this on fairly quickly, um, you can see that there's some of the color in the resin still. It hasn't all um, started to go amber yet. And that's okay, sometimes it actually stays colored in, in, the, uh, in the actual final laminate in the sun deck. But it all gets covered with the gel coat, it doesn't really matter. And what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of making sure it's tight in the corners so that there's no air bubbles in the corners. Sometimes you got to get your hands in to help do that. And just rolling it up against the, the wall surface here. You don't want to put too much pressure on though because otherwise you will squeeze resin out and end up with a dry spot again. Now just to finish off this little bit of resin I have here, I'll just hook that roller right there. One of the options you have is using a segmented metal roller uh, to help get the air bubbles out quicker. This is more of a professional tool and it just basically is aluminum uh, roller with a bunch of little ridges and those ridges allow pressure to be applied and work in the resin but the spaces allow the air to quickly get out. So I'm going to use that for uh, the next section here and it should just go a little bit easier. It is by no means necessary but it is a nice time saving feature. You generally end up with a bit better um, laminate using one of these tools. As you can see it spreads out the resin reasonably well, better than you might expect for something that has a bunch of ridges in it. Although it is leaving it a little bit resin rich here so I'm gonna, resin rich being it's basically puddling on top and you can't see the fibers as much. Now sometimes you know people may want to go for a look where it's a little bit smoother and then resin rich is okay. But if you can see the fibers when you're working and see a little bit of a texture on the wet part, that's kind of ideal because then you're not putting on tons of resin compared to the amount of glass. And the more resin that you have, you get good waterproofing, but what you don't get is necessarily the same strength and flexibility that you'd get if your glass to resin ratio was a little bit closer to ideal, and that's when you can see the fabric. So you can see here I'm, I'm using a bit of both. I'm using the small roller and the segmented roller. Smaller roller being a little bit better for putting the resin on. And then I can finish up with a segmented roller to make sure all the air is out. Now with the segmented roller, the biggest downside really to it though And I've got a few spots here that I'm just trying to work it into the cant. You know, sometimes the longer you leave difficult areas, as long as your resin isn't setting up super quick, they're actually a little bit easier to solve and get, get the mat to lay flat because the binder is dissolving in the solvents. And then they really are becoming individual strands. So you may end up spreading the strands apart a little further than the mat originally was, but you still get strength. It's not like there's nothing there. It just allows it to conform to whatever surface or shape you're trying to get it into. Um, that's one of the nice things about fiberglass mat in general uh, versus some of the other fabrics that you can use.